Hi, I'm Kate Richberg, and welcome to my Simple Soldered Pendants class. Today's class uh, is just that, a simple soldered pendant. You're going to learn how to take two metal blanks and solder them together. This class is really geared for the beginning soldering student. Um, I'm just going to go over some very simple tips and techniques um, in order um, to teach you how to do this pendant. However, we do have a class here at beeducation.com that uh, delves a little bit further into the world of soldering, and that's our Introduction to Soldering class. So if you feel that this class teaches you, you know, just what you needed to know, but you might want to delve in a little bit further, I suggest you check that class out as well. We also have a safety class on torches. It's our free torch safety talk. And I urge you, if you've never worked with a torch before, to really give that one a look as well. Also, you're just gonna need a few, very few um, tools and materials. And you can set up in a small workspace just like I have here in the studio. Just make sure that you have a fire extinguisher near and you're really familiar with how all of those tools work. Because again, in this class, we are gonna play with fire. Let's begin by discussing the tools and materials we're going to need to create this simple soldered pendant. I have some tools right here in front of me that include a texturing hammer, a hole punch. In this case, this is a 1.8 millimeter hole punch, but the hole punch just depends on what type of, what size of jump ring you actually want to put into your pendant. I've got a bench block. And on that bench block, I have my two pieces that I'm going to solder together, a heart shape and a round circle blank. I also have in front of me a pro polish pad, some fine steel wool, and a permanent marker. I'm going to use that permanent marker to actually oxidize my piece, but you can use the oxidizing solution of your choice, like liver of sulfur or silver black. I also have over here my soldering setup. You can see that I have all of the equipment that I'm going to solder with on this baking pan. The edge on the baking pan prevents any heated metal from rolling off onto my work surface or onto the floor. So I have my butane torch here. I have my solder paste and a solder pick here. And the solder paste that I have uh, is an easy solder paste. It's on top of a kiln brick. That'll be my soldering surface. And I have a quenching cup here that's filled with water and has a gripping tweezer. So after I solder my piece, I can quench it and cool it really quickly in the water in the soldering cup. I'm going to be making today has a copper circle and a sterling silver heart and the sterling silver heart is going to be soldered onto the front of that then I'm going to pop a hole in the top and that's just how simple it is to create a pendant um, but I do want to mention the um, technique that we're using today uh, for soldering is the same whether or not you're doing sterling silver soldering or soldering with copper um, the solder paste that we have here is actually, when it's all soldered, it's going to show silver. So you want to be really careful not to get it all over your piece because we don't want any of that silver showing on our copper metal. Now we're ready to solder our two blanks together to make our pendant. What I've done on the copper, just to give it a little bit of interest, is I've hammered it using the texture hammer. And the texture, I think, on the background is going to make a nice contrast to the shiny sterling silver heart. Um, so you want to make sure any texturing or any stamping that you want to do, you do before you actually start to solder your piece. So. Here is my solder paste. Now, I mentioned earlier that the solder paste is going to show up silver. So you want to make sure not to get solder all over your copper blank, because when you actually solder with your torch, that solder is going to melt, and it's going to show on your copper if it's anywhere else other than underneath the piece that you're soldering to it. So you really need to be careful there. Um, the solder just doesn't disappear into thin air. It actually has to go somewhere. I'm going to start to extrude some of the solder out of my syringe here that holds the solder. 
And this paste solder not only has the metal solder in it, small little granules of solder, of metal solder, but it also has a flux agent. And it's really important when you're soldering that you have the solder and the flux together. If there's no flux, your solder is just going to ball up on the surface of your metal and not run. So the beauty of using paste solder is it's quick, it's easy, and the solder and the flux are already mixed together. So I've squeezed a little bit of my paste solder onto the back of my silver blank and I'm going to use my soldering pick to spread the solder out. Now the more you practice and the more you do this, the better you're able, uh, you're going to be able to figure out how much solder you need. That's a question I get all the time, you know, Kate, how much solder do I actually need to put on the back of my blank? And the answer to that question is, it's kind of a flippant answer, but not too much and not too little. So again, with some practice, you're really going to be able to understand how much solder you're going to put on and how to control um, the flow of the solder and, you know, if there's any um, if there's too much solder, like I said, you're going to get solder all over your piece. So I'm just going to spread this out. And think about your blank maybe like the face of, of a clock. So if I have my blank here and this is 6 o'clock, this is 12 o'clock, this is uh, 3, and this is 9, um, you want to make sure that you get solder in all of those places. Then maybe fill in between those places and that should be about enough. Um, I'm going to add just a slight bit more here and again you don't want to go too close to the edge of your blank either because then it'll flow out and flow onto your copper. All right, I think I've placed about uh, enough solder on there and I'm going to place my blank, my heart blank, on my round circle. And remember, you're soldering this, so this is going to be attached. So once it's done, it's done. So make sure that the placement of the two blanks is where you like it to be. So I'm going to push my blank down so that the paste solder helps to form a bond between the two pieces. And I don't want to see any solder squeeze out in between the two blanks. So if that happens, that means you've put your solder perhaps too close to the edge or you've used a little too much solder. So you want to remove that very carefully using your solder pick or perhaps the edge of a little uh, of a paper towel, maybe a wet paper towel to wipe any excess solder off the surface of the blank. Alright, once I like the looks of the way that this blank is put together, um, I'm ready to solder. Now I'm ready to turn on my torch and actually solder these two pieces of metal together. Some of the things that you want to look for when you're soldering is you want to look at the temperature of the metal and the metal is going to start to glow once you have heated it with the torch. Once that metal starts to glow, you really want to look for your um, the top blank to kind of settle down on the bottom blank. And that settling means that the solder underneath has flowed and it's just like those two pieces have glued together. So that's what you're looking for. Also with paste solder, um, I find a lot of my students don't leave the torch on this piece long enough. I know it's hard to see because there's solder underneath this blank and um, you know you can't really see when it melts or when it flows. But again you're going to look for this blank settling on top, you're going to look for the glow of the metal, and you can also see sometimes right along the edge you'll see um, a flash of silver run which means that the solder has flowed and it's almost like you know the caulking along the sink you'll see that seal happening. That's what you also uh, want to look for. So let's fire up this torch and get, uh, get this piece going. Uh, regardless of whatever type of torch you're using, um, I would recommend starting further back. So you're going to see me start further back and start to gradually heat up my piece. All right, let's get started. So my torch is on. 
and from maybe about two inches away, I'm going to start heating my blank. Now, the paste solder, you may see a little bit of flaming um, as the paste sto uh, solder starts to heat. That's just the binder in the solder burning away. It's nothing to worry about. Just keep heating it um, if the piece happens to flame a little bit. It's not going to last very long. You can see some smoke maybe rising here. Um, that's uh, the solder actually drying, the paste solder drying. Now once that goes away, I'm going to get in a lot closer with my torch and I'm going to move my torch very slowly and I can see that the, my piece is starting to heat and I can also see the silver line run between the top of my heart and the bottom of the blank. So I know that that silver has um, flowed. Now, I did this kind of quickly, so I want to go over um, a couple of things again to look for. You saw how slowly I moved my torch. If I move my torch quickly, like this, my piece wouldn't heat very evenly. And we're really looking for even heating when we're soldering two pieces together. If one part of the blank is really neglected with the torch, that's going to be a lot cooler and the piece will never get fully um, hot enough for the solder to run. Also, I was holding my torch pretty close to the blank, but I was really focusing the very tip of the cone of the flame onto that onto the piece. You don't want to go too close um, or else the flame's not going to be hot enough. The real hot point on the flame of this um, torch is right at the tip of the dark purple cone or that you see coming out when it's a flame. So I'm going to put my torch aside now and I'm going to grab my piece that I've soldered and it's cooled a little bit while we've been chatting so I'm going to grab it and very carefully slide it and you're going to hear the quenching noise. Quench that in this cup of water. Now you don't have to quench it, you can just let your piece sit and cool but since we want to speed up the process a little bit um, I'll go ahead and quench that. Now that I've quenched my piece, I've moved my kiln brick to the side and you also want to be careful, the kiln brick where I have soldered on the surface is still warm so I can touch my kiln brick but I want to make sure and avoid the area where I actually soldered the piece. So now that this piece is quenched, I'm going to take it out of the water and dry it. Now this is my little test. Um, to see if the two pieces have been soldered together. What I do is I let it drop on the, my work surface like that, kind of a clunk. Let me drop it one more time. So if you get the clunking noise and your piece has uh, remained connected, you know that your solder is good and you've created that solder join. You can also take a look and really see that seal that runs all the way along the two pieces where the two pieces have joined. So with a little bit of practice, you'll be able to solder this together with no problem. Next, we're gonna pickle and uh, put a hole in this blank. Now that I've pickled my piece, it's all ready to antique and polish, pop a hole in and hang it on a chain. Just a quick word about pickling. Um, pickling uh, is a process where you put your little um, pendant in um, like a crock pot that's filled with a pickle solution and that pickle is what takes off that fire scale on um, when your metal darkens after being um, heated with the torch. Um, you don't necessarily have to pickle your pieces um, but when you buff them that fire scale will leave kind of a dark patina on your metal. Some jewelry designers use that patina to their advantage. I find that best jewelry practices really um, dictate that you pickle your piece, get it nice and clean, and then go ahead and oxidize it to your taste. So you can see how this heart, the silver heart is matted down and the copper is also matted and that's just because the metal 
hasn't been polished up yet. I'm going to start um, polishing it by just using uh, some fine steel wool and I'm just going to rub the steel wool on to my blank. You can see the blank is starting to get pretty shiny. I'm going to go ahead and do kind of a quick down and dirty um, antiquing process. So I'm going to get these little shards of um, steel wool out of my way and I'm going to give this just a little swipe now with this pro polishing pad. I don't need to do too much polishing. So now that my piece is a little shinier I'm going to hit it with my sharpie marker. Now this is kind of a quick and dirty way of, you know, antiquing um, your pieces. This definitely is not a permanent antiquing solution, but this piece, since it's on a pendant, you know, it doesn't really come in contact with the water, or at least it shouldn't. So um, this antiquing actually will stay on here pretty darn well. In the interest of time um, in this class, um, I just think it's kind of a quick and easy way to see how your pieces might look. So you can see I have antiqued the background, um, the actual copper part of this pendant, and I've left the silver um, kind of shiny. So now, let's hit it again with our Pro Polishing Pad. And start to rub away the antiquing. And here's the piece, completely polished. Here's my well-loved tub of Penny Bright. Now, Penny Bright is a food grade citric acid compound. Originally, it was used for cleaning copper cookware. What's really great about this Penny Bright is it's a fast, quick solution for getting fire scale off of your metal. It's also so environmentally friendly that you don't have to worry about any kind of acid. You can apply it with just your hands. Let me show you how this works. You're gonna love it. Okay. Here's a copper bead that I've soldered together, and here is a piece of silver that I formed into a ring band, but it needed some annealing. So let's choose, let's choose, let's choose the copper, because you know what? It's harder to get fire scale off of copper, and I really want to show you how well this product works. So I'm gonna get my little sponge out of my Penny Bright container, you can see it's well loved and well used. I'm going to dip it in my little bowl of water here and I'm going to get just a small amount onto my sponge. A toothbrush also works great during this process, but I like using the sponge. So here's my Penny Bright and let's scrub. Scrub it like you mean it, kids. Scrub that fire scale right off of the surface of your metal. This works a little bit differently than conventional pickle. First, we haven't heated anything and there is no pickle pot to contend with, but you do have to get a little bit of muscle behind what you're doing. Can you see how I'm really getting in there and scrubbing? Sometimes the addition of that toothbrush helps you get a little more scrubbing action, but you can see that's really starting to come clean. I'm going to add a little more Penny Bright to my sponge and continue working. Now you can wear some rubber gloves if you are of a cautious nature, but honestly, this food grade citric acid is so gentle on your hands, I doubt that you're gonna have any problems. Here's our bead all nice and clean, post Penny Bright. Look at that, I think it looks 
terrific. So, don't let pickling scare you away from trying soldering, kids. All you need to do, if you just want to solder a few blanks together or a couple of jump rings closed and you're worried about getting rid of fire scale, just grab that tub of Penny Bright and polish away. Okay, well, we're all polished up, our heart on our copper blank, and I've marked the placement for the hole for my jump ring. I'm gonna lay the mesh over the blank, insert it into the hole punching plier, and I wanna check all the different angles to make sure that it's in the right place. And I'm just gonna pop that hole through. Wiggle it off the plier, and it's all ready to go. Next, I'm just going to put a little jump ring on it, and I'm going to use my um, needle nose pliers. I can bend the blank bent just a touch when I did the, the hole punch, so I just bent it back really carefully using my plier. And I'm going to open up this jump ring. Open this jump ring. Open it up here. Slide my pendant on. And move the two flat nose pliers so that ring is closed. Now, we'll string it on a chain. And we have our finished pendant. Although in this class we did mix copper and sterling silver together, I wanted to share with you how this technique also works with sterling silver and gold filled. I have three samples here uh, in front of you to take a look at that I've created using sterling silver and gold filled blanks. I wanted to point out, obviously this is a gold filled heart in the center of a sterling silver circle, and this one is a sterling silver heart in the center of a gold filled circle. The gold filled circle here, I antiqued around the heart using um, some silver black, and the silver black just adds a nice line of contrast right around the heart so it really shows up on the gold filled metal. This one that's on the sterling blank you can see does not have that black edge around the heart because I didn't use any silver black to antique the piece. This piece that's laying over here I did some stamping and of course I did all of the stamping before I did the soldering and I also antiqued this using a little bit of the silver black antiquing solution. Just a note about working with gold filled, the gold filled blanks are not gold all the way through. Usually it's a 14 karat gold metal that's clad on top of a base metal, usually brass. The thickness of the gold on the metal is pretty heavy, so you won't burn through it by just using ordinary metal smithing techniques. But you do want to be careful not to keep the torch on your gold filled pieces too long or keep them in the pickle too long. You want to retain that gold surface on your piece as much as you can. But otherwise, the techniques and tips are just the same as they would be for copper or for sterling silver. Well, thanks so much for joining me today in Simple Soldered Pendants. I hope you found this class as enjoyable as I do. I really think that this technique is going to really help you further your jewelry making skills. Again, you're just using two blanks, soldering them together, 
popping a hole in them, and you've got a terrific pendant. I urge you to experiment with different shapes and sizes of metal. Um, remember, I mixed silver and copper in this piece, so let your imagination take you where it will and enjoy making your pendants. We'll see you next time.